Alrighty, let's check up on our defense replays to see if we can get anything information-wise on how to improve our defense replays. Failure, failure, success. Alright, I'm just going to tell everybody right now, I don't care about how many failures and successes I get, I just want good quality matches. And so I'm going to show two good matches, uh, matches that I feel like I can get very useful information on how to improve my team because my team isn't refined or perfect yet, so there's room for improvement. And also two bad matches where I believe that I learn nothing or uh, don't give me a good indication of where I should improve on, like which units to use, which weapons to swap out, that sort of stuff. So let's get on to the first replay. Quick rundown of their team, bonus. Something, Corin, and the carry unit, Canagus. This unit, very, very strong. So, I don't think I have to tell you right now that he's going to just steamroll my team. So, first off, I'm just gonna let the defense replay uh, run so you can just see how things go. Okay, I know I said I'd let the defense replay run, but uh, at this point it's unnecessary because they've, they've just won. Um, there's really nothing else to get from this. So I guess I'll just start on the uh, match analysis. So this person ran the super tank strategy and uh, as you can see, it worked to great effect. I'm just going to go back to the point uh, before my team initiates on this Canagus. So I can talk about potential counters and strategies that I can run for my team. Skip all this. Okay. So even though the Robin got sniped, that's not important to me because if this person was playing optimally, the Robin would be unsnipable, I guess, or they wouldn't be put in a dangerous position. They just got baited by the pots early and the rally trap. Uh, that's not the. That's not what I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be looking at this Canius. So, first question to ask is why did I lose? And it's easy to see that this Canius sweeped, but I'm going to need to look a bit further. Take it one step further, you know. Uh, vague answers like Canius steamrolled my team doesn't really help. How did he win? Well, he won with stat buffing to the point where my team did no damage and he one shot all my units. So, that's going one step further, and then I'm going to take it even one step further and think about counters on how to take out this Kenigus. So, the other thing that I want to keep in mind is that he's also being buffed by Corrin, who's his, who is his ally support. So Corrin, with his weapon and being one space away, gives him five uh, to all stats, and he's also got double drive res, right? And a bunch of buffs. So he's easily hitting like close to 60 defense and res and over 80 attack. How would I basically approach this monstrosity going forward, right? Because if one person can do it this way, then maybe there are similar units that can do it um, like a thousand times over, right? So how would I counter this strategy? First thing I want to consider is that I could displace this Canigus so that he doesn't get the plus five to all stats. The other thing um, I can think about doing is panicking this Canigus. So if he's panicked, then all these stats that he gets from buffs uh, become a detriment. And if I also displace him, then he also loses the stats from Corrin. So to combine those two things, uh, what I could run 
is firstly, like I said in my last video, run Rogic. And if I were to run Rogic, he doesn't take a counter attack because this is an armor unit. And two, if I run something like Drawback or Lunge, then this Kanegus gets moved out of this coin's range and is easier to take down. But obviously that's that by itself is not going to do it because he's still really, really beefy with these stats, right? I'd need like uh, 55 attack to even dent the guy. So uh, there has to be some other way, right? So imagine that I did lunge or draw back this Kanegus. He would be here and out of the Corrin support range and alone from the rest of his team. And if I would somehow find a way to take out this Kanegus, then my defense team would be in a very good position to uh, maybe not sweep, but make it difficult for him to uh, get away with the pots or take out multiple units. So let's just imagine that he is on this trap now. After the lunge, I could run a panic, panic stuff, so that uh, he reaches uh, like 36 defense and minus six to everything instead, right? Um, I could also use, I was gonna say armor effectiveness, but he's also using Saval and Shield, so I can't do that. Uh, I'm also running a Rally Trap, right? So another thing I could potentially do is before Kanegus um, sweeps my team, I could run, uh, instead of Null Follow-Up for, you know, the really, really small percentage that uh, someone runs Null Follow-Up and uh, QR or something like that, <clears throat> instead I can run a Ruse skill. And the great thing about Ruse skills is on defense, you apply the debuff after the enemy has been buffed, right? So you give them a debuff when you rally. So that helps Roderick or whoever I'm running as my Lance Cav do a bit more damage to dent this Kanegus before he gets lunged. And then I could also run a Panic Staff to panic this Kanegus. And then after that, have either Kagero or Makaya come in from maybe, maybe here or here. No, no, sorry. The, the staff unit would be here, so Kago or Makai would have to be here. And then I guess Self could also help as well. So, um, the highest HP healer that I can use is going to be something like Azama. So I can run Panic Ploy just in case, you know, someone has low HP in this column. Or I can just use the standard Panic Staff. Or I could use a Candlelight or Flash Staff. One of those options, right? So after they get debuffed and panicked, um, it could make it easier on my team to take out this Kanegus and then basically take out the rest of his team afterwards. Additionally, another thing I could do is not change uh, my unit and have instead Cecilia run the cleanup. So that just means that I need to make sure that Cecilia deals at least one damage with uh, her stats. So right now, if the Kanegus were to be displaced, he would reach 52 attack. So right now, my Cecilia would reach 54, so she deals like one attack. So if she were to be running the cleaner, she would get plus 26, sorry, not 26, 24 to all stats. And Bold Fighter lets her double, and obviously I'd be running Bonfire instead for the three charges. Um, so because I'm doubling, I would deal Say 1 plus 24, 25 times 2 is 50. And 50 out of uh, 56 HP is quite a lot, almost enough for the kill, and enough for one of my units to pick up the KO later. Uh, I won't get a Bonfire off because he's running Special Fighter, of course, but that's how I would rationalize taking out a monster such as this. Um, take a look at your replays, see how the enemy sets up their teams, and then find specific counters not specific because you don't want your team to be like too specialized for a comp but this should work for any um, mega tank strategy that people run right so obviously first thing i want to do is replace ephraim with roderick but i don't have one right now so i'm gonna have to wait for that the other thing is put on the cleaner for cecilia or run a panic panic stuff user lean towards the cleaner because if the enemy is plus 24 buffed in this situation, then that makes it very hard for them to approach. They'd have to just go in without the buffs. And uh, with everything else that I'm running, 
or plan to run, that'll make it very difficult for them to tank properly, unless you're a certain <coughs> lord that uses a certain axe, but we'll get to that in a bit. So those are the two uh, things that I would change about my defense team after watching this replay. So that's the information that I got out of this replay. The fact that Robin died is inconsequential. It doesn't matter. If the player was playing optimally, that Robin wouldn't get uh, taken out. So let's move on. <sighs> Speak of the devil, here he is. So, this person has an insane Brave Ike. Um, going back to what I said before about a certain Lord with an axe, this is him. Irvine just turns him to basically the best tank in the game, in my opinion. Or one of, if not the best tank. Uh, in a general usability sense, because he just gets so much damage reduction for free. Uh, and obviously he has Brave Lucina supporting him, which makes, him, makes it all much better and... By this point, I think most people would have one, if not both of them. Well, everybody should have a Brave Ike for free from the quests that we got from the latest update. And Brave Lucina, I can imagine people will be summoning for her for at least one copy if they didn't already. Um, so let's just watch, because you don't really need to <laughs> hear me explain how Brave Ike is going to ruffle salt my team. This is kind of sad, but again, I'll just have to think of something instead of complaining. So by this point, uh, he's basically won the map, he just needs to make sure that doesn't happen. But unfortunately for him, I'm assuming he's playing a bit lazily, he's just like, oh, Ike's like an unkillable tank. There's no AoE specials, he can do this, and he just forgets about his other units. <clears throat> I don't think there's really uh, much else to go over. Having no trouble tanking at all. That 40% uh, that damage reduction was... That's so overkill. And Divine Toothing only hits 50 against magic users, that's so dumb. Come on, give me that refine IS. <clears throat> well, I believe we've seen enough, he can't get the pots. Um, he had a good unit, but I guess poor play. Let's go back. Even though this person played uh, poorly, What's important is that I learn how to counter this strategy because I'm going to be assuming a lot more people are going to be running it because Brave Ike is free and as I said, they can easily pick up Lucina from the new powers banner. So how would I take out this monstrosity? Well, the first thing is an AoE mage. So I, instead of uh, this cargo, I could run, say, Ophelia or I could run... Um, like I said, with the high HP healer, if I decide to go that route, an inventory pulse set up with, say, Sonia or Lena or something like that, right? To take out this Brave Ike. Other than that, I don't think there's really much I can do because he just tanks everything with his high damage reduction. So I'd need, like, multiple mages, and even then he heals with... Uh, ether because uh, almost all of them double so kind of stumped for this one honestly uh, I'll have to go back to the drawing board and theory craft some nasty setups to take out uh, this Ike without changing my core team too much uh, as I said one of the best tanks in the game <sighs> it's gonna make my AR defense really work for those wins you know um, but I'm not going to give up. I could complain, but that's no fun, so I'm going to come up with something nasty just for this Brave Ike. Alright, those were the good matches where I felt like I could get something useful out of watching them. So now for the two matches that I 
feel like I get nothing out of. This person also has a Brave Ike, but as you can see, they lost because I got a success. So clearly they messed something up, right? Let's have a look at what they do. Turn one, already messed up. Um, this could have easily been avoided if you just looked at <laughs> my uh, self skills and saw that he had Sudden Panic. So because my self has Sudden Panic, this Ike is now looking like a four star unit. Not even a good four star unit, like maybe a maxed level 43 star unit or even one star unit. He has like 15 speed, 13 res, 23 defense and 43 attack. So this is what I was talking about before with stacking buffs and debuffs, as in penalties that is on the enemy unit. So because this Ike is debuffed into oblivion, <sighs> some, the unthinkable is going to happen. He's going to die. And now that his like, mega tank is uh, done for, he's going to struggle. <clears throat> there we go. And now there's no way for him to get the pots. And that should be the end of the match. There isn't really anything else to go over other than the sad, sad ending to this match for this player. Final turn. Surrender. Okay. So, I actually don't really want to go back into it because that Brave Ike should have been able to handle my team. He just let that Ike get debuffed. And good players aren't going to let their units get debuffed. They'll read the skills, look at uh, every unit, and make sure to play in a way that they have the advantage on their side. You never want to play at a disadvantage. Alright, second match. Uh, looking at their team, you can tell they're going to struggle. Honestly, I don't think this person really knew how to approach the map with his two Makayas and Elise. Or maybe she. <clears throat> I guess I just go uh, all in, so. But uh, you never really want to do that because you're guaranteed to lose a unit and you want to play for perfection if you care about climbing, that is. I don't think there's anything else for me to get from this match, but we'll watch the end. <clears throat> Surrender? Respect for fighting till the end. But that was the last uh, defense replay that I wanted to show. And this was, well, I consider this a bad replay, even though I won, because I didn't really learn anything about how I could improve my defense team. And they just didn't bring uh, the right units. And most of the teams in tier 21 plus in ETH raids will steam steamroll people that aren't prepared. Well, maybe not steamroll, but if you aren't prepared, then you're gonna struggle a lot. You need like, invested units if you want to climb like pretty far but yeah um that'll be it for defense replays so i have two possible adjustments that i can make uh first of which i'm planning to 
make as soon as I get the resources for it. I want to uh, build a Roderick to replace that Ephraim to make people's lives even more miserable because it's a fire sweep with darting stance, not stance, darting blow. Second uh, and third thing is kind of like a minor upgrade. I also want harsh command so that Roderick can get buffed and have no negative effects on him and put a ruse skill on Kago instead of null follow up because most of the time, I don't think no follow-up would be effective. As in, I don't think there will be many instances where a unit will be running like, I don't know, wary fight, double wary fighter or something like that. Like a Duma with wary fighter. Uh, so I was thinking about using defense res uh, ruse, as I stated before, to get some extra damage. And I'm going to try, I think I'm going to try using the cleaner on uh, the Winter Cecilia to discourage people from using buffs. But anyways, that's how I believe that you should approach defense replays. Don't just look at the uh, success count or the failure count and be like, oh man, my life's horrible, etherate sucks. Try and focus on uh, seeing where your team struggles and make adjustments. And that's what I'm going to be doing every so often. And I don't know when I'm going to get a Roderick or any of those other skills. So the next video will come out when I get those said skills. And then we can watch another week of defense replays. Uh, so until then, good luck on Ether Raids. And don't just, just think. Take your time and think. Please buff Divine Tiffin. It's so underwhelming right now.